Why is it that when I said Nicholas, my phone automatically wants to correct it to get caged after? Every time. Really? Every ah, time. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I'm a sexy cat. Hi, welcome to Save Point, a show where we talk about video games and topics that you send to us on Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube using hashtag SavePoint. I'm Michael Anthony Torres. I'm Ryan Shepard. I'm Hunter Taylor. And we have a great show. So, Ryan, would you like to start us off? Oh, I fucking will. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Video game bang from Twitter. Our great friends. Awesome podcast. Sexy gentlemen and such. <clears throat> we started with one simple game of League of Legends, kind of as a joke, but now it's all we think about. Why is this happening? So I think the the question there is, what is the obsession behind League of Legends? MOBAs and, and all that? Uh, they're fun. I don't enjoy League. Yeah. You don't enjoy I, I like Dota too. But ultimately, they are the same. They're similar games. I, I, yeah, you know, that's like saying Battlefield and fucking... Uh, uh, they're uh, both MOBAs. Are the same. They're, they're not. both MOBAs. Not all first-person shooters are the same. They, they are both MOBAs, I'll give you that, but do they you play have, differently. Do you have three skills and an ultimate in both of those games? Do you not have, like, the same guns in every first-person shooter? Don't you also go to the store, which is at your base, and you have to buy no, items, and you can build items? Are there not three lanes well, with actually, turrets and... The funny thing is, I was talking to someone earlier today, and they said that they like League a lot, League a lot, but uh, they didn't really enjoy Dota because they couldn't quite understand the recipe system. So, it really is... Dealer's choice, I guess. I don't, I'm not a Why don't you tell us? I'm not you know all about yes. League of Legends. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I don't play either Dota or League. They're not my type of games. They aren't really for me either. I mean, I enjoy Dota a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't really know why anyone. Actually, the only person who could really speak to this isn't in this episode. Uh, I, I, I play, <laughs> I play a, quite a bit of the Infinite, Infinite Crisis beta. But that's just I'm a DC fanboy. Yeah. No lie. Um, I do like League. I'm not a huge Dota fan just because people in Dota are are exactly what we talked about last episode, where they're just horrible people. They're huge fishes. <laughs> yeah, and they like yeah, fucking. I mean, if you don't play the way they want you to play, exactly. If you don't play exactly how they expect you to play, well, then they're gonna kill your mother. After, of course, they have sex with her. So I, I just I would just rather not put my mom in that situation. Yeah, it is really high stress, but I don't know. I guess it's. Maybe it's just something so competitive about it. It is a very highly competitive game. I think it's just because it's so simple. It's just five players. It's 5v5. Five five, and it can be slow. That's the thing. Like Even though you can snipe, even though you can do these things where you end a character so quick, ultimately it boils down to like a lot of micromanaging and skill. A fight can be really prolonged. You know what I mean? And also, I think it's also because aren't they both free too? Yeah, so, it's like so there's two, just a huge two audience. Two free really good games with a lot that's audience. true. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think there's that adrenaline aspect to it. You know what I mean? It's like you, those games, you will spend a lot of time being bad. A lot of time being bad. So when you do good, you're like, oh yeah, we're doing it! We're doing it! Exactly, right? <laughs> oh, I got a kill, right? Woo! I don't remember the last time I played League and I wasn't just hammering somebody, just taking them down. And then but somebody, what were you doing somebody while you were playing? What? Oh, and then somebody, somebody, somebody comes out of the jungle and pokes them, and they get the kill. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. I guess this is how we play that game now. I guess we'll have a hundred assists. So that's the life, dude. It's cold blooded out there. Hard out there. Hard, hard out there in the jungle. In the lull. Just God. trying to get some creeps. You know. Hot in the jungle. Jesus. Um, <laughs> I hope I hope that answered your question. Video game bang. Ask somebody who plays more league. Yes. All right. Uh, this is from GamerX at GamerX. Super fan. Do you think handheld systems will ever get popular again? Um, I don't think the 3DS. I think it's, is struggling yeah. at all. It's yeah. not. It's still a money printing press. I mean, I don't know. Handheld gaming is kind of weird because mobile gaming is so huge now, but it's not like a handheld thing. Like no. you don't. You're not going to go and buy a handheld gaming device, yeah. you're gonna have a cell phone that also plays games. Exactly. And you're not so, you're not dropping forty dollars. Well, so on so a that's phone my game. question, I guess. It is are cell phones basically gonna phase out actual handheld consoles? You know what I, I mean? I feel like they are just because it's so much more convenient, especially and especially now that phones are getting so strong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Too strong. And a lot a lot of game a lot of games on phones are free to plays and there are they are super successful. Mm -hmm. Ninety at, at uh, just recently came out, ninety three percent of all money 
made from cell phone games come from in-game purchases. Yeah, you know, free to play. Even, is the, huge even the pay to game, um, pay to play games. Um, you know, like they have like ports of Final Fantasy VI now, and they have like what, what's that one? Do you know what the one is for the iPhone? That's like s- like super good graphics. Infinity. They show Isn't Infinity it? Blade. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's Infinity it. Infinity Blade. Um, yeah, like, that's like three bucks. A really good looking game and still very cheap. I so, bought I bought games. I have um. Oh goodness, what's it called? You know, you have the little hexagon, and super hexagon. Mm-hmm. It's like it's a rhythm game, but it's not your average rhythm right. game. But I paid two bucks for that, and I, I don't know. regret it. When I had like my old iTouch, I had like Grand Theft Auto, China, 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 what is it, Chinatown Wars or something yeah. like that. That was a really good game. Yeah. For the so I think it's possible that handheld games could be phased out, but I think it's going to be think, about ten but, years. Yeah, at, at the moment, at the moment, the 3DS and the DS are still really strong. Yeah. There's still I a lot think, of fun games say, coming out. I don't think uh, mobile games will take out the 3DS mm-hmm. because no. the 3DS, like the majority of the people I know, have 3DSs. The 3DS has such 3DS is well, the 3DS has such a large fan base, even though, like, obviously mobile is way higher because yeah. everybody has a phone. Mm-hmm. But I do, don't think it's going to take out 3DS, but I think the handheld console, obviously, that's struggling is the PS Vita. But so I think they're making a like comeback a bit. I think PS Vita is kind of coming back because uh, yeah. with the, with the, I've read some stuff saying that with the Vita TV, it's actually really convenient to where, you know, the Vita TV is very small, fits in your pocket. You play your games on your Vita, then you get home and you can, you can stream it from the Vita to the TV. And yeah. a lot of people say that's awesome. It's just, I, the, I think uh, Vita has like a, I don't know how to explain it. It's just I mean, it's got that weight behind it now, now that it's so integrated with the PS4, yeah, and now yeah. that they're pushing that. But even then... That hasn't sold nearly as well. No, no, not nearly as See, much. See, the, th- the funny thing is, is when Sony came out with the PlayStation 3, mm-hmm. they said that they were taking a hit on every console they sold. Oh, yeah. I think they should have done that with the Vita. I they were they... taking hits at $600. They were yeah. taking a hit. I don't think they're taking a hit on the Vita. I think they should have done that. Like, I think they should have priced it lower and took the hit. Mm-hmm. But and then made their money and, back on yeah, software. Yeah, and then grew the game market for mm-hmm. it. The PS Vita was like 250 right? Mm-hmm. $250, yeah. And I, I, have, I have trouble believing that that, that... that was with like a good memory card, I think. Yeah. And I have trouble believing that that was $250 console. And then they have like, yeah. a, they had like a difference between like three... Like, then they have like a 3G... It had a 3G and a yeah. Wi-Fi model. Yeah. yeah. And I think now they don't even do that mm-hmm. anymore. Now it's just Wi-Fi... Because 3G just isn't as big, apparently. I don't know. I don't know anything. I'm done. Because the thing is here is, is, you know, I'm not some marketing strategist, but what I would have said is that they knew they were going to come out with the PlayStation 4. They're going to have all these awesome features for it. If when the Vita came out, they priced it super, super aggressively, you know, to compete and sold the units. And then they're like, hey, we're coming out with the PlayStation 4. It's got all these integrated features you can use with your Vita. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Now you got all these people who are for sure going to buy the PlayStation 4 because they can utilize their Vita with it. Or just held the Vita back, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And held it back to around the time PS4 was announced. And right. then just said, hey, you want to get the Vita? Good, because now the Vita is coming out. And look at the PS4. Look at all the stuff you're going to be able to do. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? I'd like to see those bundles they were talking about, but even the bundles they were talking about with the PlayStation Vita, like, they weren't very discounted. No, they're not. So, I mean, I imagine it is an expensive little piece of hardware, but, I don't know, it's Sony. They're pretty huge. Yeah, they're pretty big. They got they got, they got got some money. Some. Yeah. Not a whole lot. But, uh, yeah, I think 3DS is fine. Yeah. I think it'll survive. Yeah. I, I think it'll live out through its generation, mm-hmm. you know, without mm-hmm. much. I don't know. But I don't oh, know yeah. after that. I don't know if, because I think it's, you know, it, it's kind of a novel concept now. It's like, oh, a handheld game console. You mean something my phone does? Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you're—I don't know. I'm trying to think of an equivalent of that. But especially now that a lot of companies are coming out with the peripherals that you add on your phone yeah. that have a dedicated stick mm-hmm. and buttons. You know what I mean? That's ultimate because that's ultimately the issue with phones. Phones yeah. are touch screens, and because of that, you don't get tactile control. But a lot of companies now are coming out with those peripherals that you add on, and once those become small, and once those become cost effective, effective where it's not a big deal to throw it in your backpack throw it in your purse, throw it in your pocket, right. and then hook your phone up to it, that's it. Oh, I think sure. that I think that eats. I think that eats yeah, the, the you're mobile market launch. You want the You want exactly. that, the feel. But this is kind of a tangent, but since you mentioned peripherals, did you hear what's going on with uh, Razer and Microsoft? No. Oh, shit. Okay, you know Razer. Like, they make yes. gaming products for PC. They also make uh, a controller for the Xbox yes. 360, and they're making one for the Xbox One now. So, and they're, they're, they have this made a big deal with Microsoft to make peripherals for the Xbox One. So a lot of people were like, why aren't you guys making stuff for PlayStation? 
and the CEO of Razer said that he wants to make products for stuff that he plays. Exactly, that's what he plays. Yeah. I, so I, I was like, yet. damn, shots fired. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I don't play the PlayStation. I'm not gonna make products for it. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. That was straight up. Off hashtag shots fired. <laughs> hashtag use scrub. Straight up. He's a, a very eloquent man. If you he ever is. seen him speak. Yeah, I don't know. Does that cover it or? Yeah, I hope. I mean, I hope that covers it. I don't think. I, for now, the 3DS and the DS, even the DS, the DS is so strong, and the 2DS now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Those aren't going away. They're not going away anytime soon. Nick's I wouldn't system. Yes, I wouldn't DS, call... He loves the 2DS. I wouldn't call the 2DS a mobile, like, you're going to carry that with you, because it is quite a bit bigger than mm-hmm. the other ones, but still something that you could sit around in your house and take it around. The right. Yeah, take right. it around. Yeah. I don't know. My butt covers it. Let's go into another topic. From Twitter, Jason O'Malley. You guys should talk about the net neutrality court decision on the next save point. I'd be interested in your view- viewpoints. Okay, so... Good thing, because you're about to get them. Yeah, all right, so do you understand what, what basically... Yes, is? Oh, I understand okay. what net neutrality is. All right, so do you know what happened recently? No, I do not. Okay, net neutrality is the idea that companies cannot regulate and control how you experience the net. So basically, you can access any websites that are out there and... and, and they must provide it at the same speed. So if you have a 30 megabyte download, that's across the board. Now, if you take away net neutrality, which basically this um, court ruling was to try to uphold net neutrality or, or basically kind of like, not reinstate it, but, but uh, enforce it. Yeah, so keep speak. the status quo. But it, it, it got denied, it got put down. So net neutrality is like kind of like in the air in a bad situation right now. All right, for example, something that kind of relates to this is, and this is on the positive end of it, this is positive anti-net neutrality, is that um, companies like AT&T want to make deals with companies like Facebook. Now, what, what would happen is, is Facebook would pay AT&T, and for paying AT&T, if you access Facebook from your phone, it wouldn't be charged to your data plan. So anytime oh. you access Facebook, you don't, you don't incur any data over AT&T's network. Now that, but what that also means is they could go so far as than selling the internet in cable packages. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, for twenty dollars a month, you get Facebook, CNN News, and Fox Sports, and that's all you can access. Yeah. Because they're the only ones who paid up. So that's why it's so important that we have it, mm-hmm. because that means they can basically police the internet however they want. Yeah. So thoughts on that? Uh, I think unfortunately, it's an unfortunate thing because there's some there are some things on the internet that that are just horrible, horrible mm-hmm. things. Like you know, like. You know, like you places. You, you know, you go the deep internet. That's yeah. called. If you have Tor, if you have the onion, you know, the onion route, right. you can go to Silk Road and buy yeah. a bunch of drugs. Well, that's and... been shut down now. No, it's back up. Is it? Yeah, Silk Road's but back still, up. But still, that's not for corporations. But the, the point of what I'm saying, like the police. Unfortunately, that's the bad part of yeah. Even, but ultimately. Net neutrality is something that's more important yeah, that exactly. we need to keep, even though you have those negatives, even though you have those, you know, you go on the deep internet, you can find a guy to kill somebody for like 50 bucks. You know what I mean? That's unfortunate, but ultimately freedom of speech and not monetizing content like that, that should yeah. be free to the public is so much more important that I don't understand how it can even mm-hmm. be brought up. And, and there are already issues where this is kind of happening where, or we're just on the speed side, mm-hmm. is if you go on YouTube, you might notice that pre-roll ads never have to buffer, but your YouTube videos do. Oh. Um, yeah, that's part of it, is because it's about the money that's involved. And I don't like the idea of any company, especially a huge conglomerate like Bell Southeastern or whatever they're held. Bell South. That, that's AT&T is Bell yeah. Southeastern, is they're, they're, or Comcast, yeah. being able to say, hey, if you don't pay us off, your internet, your website pretty much doesn't exist to our customers. Yeah, which is BS. bad. It's basically censorship from the corporations, and I fucking think it's the worst thing ever. Yeah. Since play. Since play. <laughs> what do you think, Hunter? Yeah, I don't think that's cool to restrict people on what they want to look up. Like, honestly, just, like, I think that's, like, cool that, okay, if you access your Facebook on your phone, then I won't go to your data plan or whatever. That's convenient. That's, that's but... convenient, but at the same time, I don't want to only use Facebook. I want to use 
everything that I want to use. They've tried to use other BS excuses too, like, oh, if with, with, with this out of the way, we can prioritize, you know, um, emergency services using their internet connection, like, oh, police services and, and, uh, and you know, ambulances and fire trucks and all that shit. Like, Why don't you just prioritize them without Facebook? Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> it's not impossible to do one the without is, the other. The thing is, is that there's so much bandwidth that they just don't give to customers in the first place that it's not a problem. Like, yeah. Like, they only give what they really have to. You know what I mean? Like, they're so shitty on how much internet we're really given and what they what they can actually do. Mm -hmm. So that's a BS excuse. There's plenty of bandwidth. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't live in South Korea. Mm -hmm. So I see what you're saying. There's plenty of bandwidth. There's plenty of bandwidth on the coasts. You know what I mean? But someone in Alabama... Not in Alabama. I'm sorry. I'm making it... You know, I, apparently I don't know geography. Apparently I've lived in this country my entire life <laughs> and cannot think of a country or a state in the middle of the country. So let's go with Oklahoma or Ohio. Yeah, I was going to say Oklahoma. Nebraska. Nebraska, you know? Unfortunately, there are some people there who have low bandwidth because of their seclusion, mm -hmm. but ultimately, the majority of the United States lives in coastal areas. Yeah. Or adjacent to the coast where it's not impossible to but run But even games. in those, even though those landlocked states, like, have such poor service and stuff out there anyway, that doesn't matter. Like, yeah. Like, they won't run lines if it's not in them for money, mm -hmm. you know? So that's, uh, that still doesn't really, there's no justification for it. Net neutrality is extremely important, and, uh, you know, call your congressman and all that stuff to yeah. make sure that they support it. Do all that shit and write letters and all that. Because you know, no, it's it's very it's very important. It could have a negative impact on games. It could have a negative impact on the economy, on your freedom yeah. of speech. Just everything. Just as gamers, it affects you. Is is, yes. is if Microsoft doesn't pay off AT and T, you go home and you want to play on Xbox Live, and you, everything is crazy lag, and you can, it's unplayable because they didn't pay off AT and T to let you. Exactly. It basically lets ISPs hold the internet ransom. Mm -hmm. Which is some bullshit. Bullshittles. I can't get... Yeah. Bullshittles. He said it. Yeah. He's <laughs> just like, damn. I messed up. I can't so, make it better than that. Uh, you know, let us... Let us uh, Where are you on the net neutrality yes. issue, huh? Let us know in them comments. And uh, well, do we have any other interesting questions to ask today? No. Um, What's your favorite cereal? Do you have a favorite yes. cereal? Lucky Charms. Oh, really? You had a problem? Lucky Charms, come on, man. They're magically delicious, bro. Not even magical. No. Don't okay, you ever tell ready? me to be quiet about Lucky Charms. <laughs> uh, original Cap'n Crunch. Ew. That's my jam. What? There's no one who doesn't like Cap'n Crunch. Why don't you go eat Pops? <laughs> or pops kicks. are okay. Or eat Kicks. Every commercial Kicks is garbage. That was never kid tested. Not in my house. <laughs> what was that? Every Pops commercial was so just, it was really kind of not making me want to eat Pops at all. Like, yeah, they were all like, really weird. Like the guys like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if they changed Cocoa Puffs or my taste buds changed, but like, I loved Cocoa Puffs when I was a kid. And, and, same just, thing, and then I ate it out, it's like, it tastes same, like shit. Same thing with co uh, Cookie Crisp. Like, Cookie Crisp, oh, they garbage. use like the stupid artificial whatever cookies that aren't that good. It's like space I, cookies. Like, they've been like, you know, cookies. vacuum packed and everything. The cereal I can eat like all day is Fruit Loops. Yeah. I can eat Fruit Loops Dude, all day. I still love Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops, yeah. Fruit Loops is a close, close second. Lucky Charms is garbage. You're I garbage. Love, I, love <laughs> I mean, it's good, but it's like, okay, just give me the marshmallows. Don't give me the, like your shit. Chill, <laughs> chill. And I would like to say that when it comes to my my cereal game, mm -hmm. if my milk is not on the verge of freezing, mm -hmm. if my milk is not <laughs> freezing cold, mm -hmm. I can't do it. You know, it's a dangerous. Cereal? I gotta pull it right out of the fridge. Here's a dangerous cereal because like I end up eating the whole box. Right. Is is Fruity Pebbles. Yeah. You ever eat fruity pebbles? Like they're so they're so, like they're so like ninety percent air. Yes. So you just inhale them. I wolf them down. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that they go soggy faster than anything else. So you eat it so fast that your body doesn't even register you're eating. And I, I eat the whole box. It's, yeah. That, that's the summary of that. A close second for me would be Crunch Berries. Captain Crunch Crunch Berries is amazing. See, that's the best thing about Captain Crunch is that they give you choices. They have options. Okay, the original, which is just like the you know the squares, peanut butter. Okay, Captain Crunch with berries or. Oops, all berries. You want to oops, all berries. Where's oops, all marshmallows, Michael? Oh, they have double they marshmallow. Have they have one? Do they have, yeah, oops, all berries. It's yeah. only berries. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Crunch, it's only berries. Like, they fucked up. Like, they're in the factory. Oh, all berries. <laughs> well, send it out. We already made it. I have to get that. Oops, all berries. You I don't, need, you don't need to do the marshmallows. Needed. The ratio is perfect. Oh, my God. When I was a little kid, Captain Crunch, the peanut butter ones, mm -hmm. like they don't do it anymore. Like, it, they came with this like thing in the box that was like a, a peanut butter rice crispy type thing. Oh my god, it was so good. Let's see, like, nothing. Another yeah, nothing. cereal I can eat like a whole box of is Frosted Flakes. 
I love Frosted Flakes. I like okay. and, and some cinnamon and, toast crunch. Oh, here's and, a weird one. Yeah, it's good. Mini Wheats. I love Mini Wheats. Do you like Mini Wheats? Yeah. Regular Mini Wheats or Frosted Mini Wheats? Cinnamon. Okay. Uh, the, the cinnamon oh. brown sugar Mini Wheats. Yes. Um, crap. What is it? Uh, <laughs> um, the uh, Apple 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 Jacks. Apple Jacks. Oh, Apple, Apple Jacks is good. Apple Jacks is really oh, you good. Would you guys like Honey Smacks? Yeah, I honey smacks. I've never had honey smacks. Isn't that the one with like, the bear on the front? Uh, isn't it a frog? It's a frog or a bear. So I like, like honey. Frog. Yes, and he's got the baseball cap. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and like they kind of almost look like um like almonds or something. They're yeah. kind of like I don't know. I like um. Oh, good though. Golden grams. Yeah. Uh, I, like toast I like golden grams are so much. Better. I like I like <laughs> honey nut Cheerios, not regular Cheerios. Yeah. Regular Cheerios is just oats. That's yeah. what you feed off. Honey nut Cheerios is pretty good. Honey nut Cheerios and frosted Cheerios. Yeah, those are good. Those are good. Yes, those are really good. What's another good one? You don't like pops? No. Like, what, what is that cool pops. aluminum bag they put it in? And why to, do they have to do that? You want to know? Because what? they need a gimmick. Because that <laughs> cereal it's good. sucks. It's like, good. Better than when, kicks. When fruity pebbles yeah, kicks are trash. When fruity pebbles are soggy, you'll still eat them. But when pops are soggy, they just look gross. Like, yeah. Oh, I know. No, no, I, they no that me. that and I can't have so, when I'm when I'm eating my cereal. I'm doing this number where all right. So there's so I got the bowl. The milk's in there. The milk's in there. And I'm eating it, I'm eating it. And here's the thing, I, I'm doing like this stir thing, I gotta pull the wet ones up to the top. I'm not eating soggy cereal. And at any point in time is my cereal soggy. It's not <laughs> Okay, this is really fat, this is awful, I'm gonna say it though. So Fruity Pebbles, like I said, they go soggy really fast. So, I put so much Fruity Pebbles in the bowl that most of it is like an island. It's emerged <laughs> from the milk so it's on top. So you can just, <laughs> You can you take your spoon and you just get the dry one that's like land, you know, built up, and then you scoop in the milk and you're good. Reminds me. God, I'm hungry now. <laughs> I don't know. I could eat some cereal. When you guys were talking about kicks, it reminded me of uh, Doug Glover's stand up when he was saying that kicks is like the hand jobs of cereal. It's it like, is. this is good, but you know what I really want? And then it's <laughs> like, I don't want kicks. Have you heard saw his stand up? Yeah. And then yeah, like, he weird. said, his is brother, weirdo, weirdo? his brother, it was weirdo. Yeah, weird, weird His brother know. loved sugar and everything, and that they got the kicks <laughs> and like the cocoa puffs. <laughs> yes, and when and she, and she put a little more in them, shook it up. I was like, there you go. And he was uh, like, yeah. oh, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let us know what's your favorite cereal. Let us yeah, know. And, and, what's your favorite <laughs> cereal, and how do you feel about net neutrality? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Two of the most important questions of our generation. Yeah. The most important things you can be asked right now. Also, if you're eating cereal, um, tell us. Right now. <laughs> and uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and um... All that jazz. All that jazz. And all that jazz!